Hello, hello, I'm Teha, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to lube your MX style switches. Lubing switches is an extremely popular customization performed by mechanical keyboard enthusiasts, as it can greatly enhance the smoothness and acoustics of a switch when done properly. Just take a listen. For the majority of people in the hobby, it's one of those things where once you try it, it's hard to go back to life without it. I should mention lubing is generally only done to linears and tactiles, especially when it comes to MX style switches. Although you can lube certain clicky switches, it's usually not recommended due to the nature of the mechanisms of clicky switches. While I'll be sharing my personal method for lubing MX style switches in this video, it's not the only way to lube switches, so feel free to adapt it to a method that works for you. First, I'm going to be showing you guys how I lube a single switch, and then in the later part of the video, some tips and tricks for when you lube multiple switches in a row for a build. Let's get the things we need out of the way first. You're obviously going to need your lube of choice and your switches. For this tutorial, I'll be using Crytox 205 Grade Zero, a fairly popular lubricant, and Cherry MX Black switches. My methodology is the same regardless of what lube I use, so even if you're not using Crytox 205 Grade Zero, you can still follow along in this video. It's ideal that you have a switch opener, especially if you plan on building multiple keyboards. The one I'm using here is from Keyboss. I've been using it now for almost three years and have felt no need to purchase a new one, but any similar product will do, they essentially all work the same. I'll have links to this as well as some alternatives down below in the description box. You're also going to want a thin paintbrush, preferably a double zero or triple zero size. And I'm not exactly sure what this last item is officially called, but at least in the context of keyboards, we're going to call it a stem holder. This one is somewhat optional, it's more of a quality of life kind of product, but I personally recommend it. First, we need to disassemble the switch. A MX style switch is composed of a top housing that clips onto a bottom housing via four clips. You simply position the switch onto the switch opener such that a side with two visible clips are aligned with a side with two prongs on the opener, and then gently push down just enough such that it separates the two halves. Once you've opened up the switch, separate out all the components. Now that we've opened the switch, it's time to apply lube where needed. There's a great post by community member Walker Stop over at Keep Talk that documents areas of friction within a switch that I highly encourage everyone to check out, as it'll provide some great insights into why certain areas of a switch are lubed. And one final advice before we dive in, the key to lubing is less is more. If you're new to lubing, I highly encourage you to start with as little lube as you can during application, since if you end up feeling like your switch can use more lube, you can always add more, but removing lube is a much more cumbersome process. Okay, we're gonna start off by lubing the bottom housing first. Dip your brush in your lube and gather enough lube on the tip, around the size of half of one of the gold switch pins. I transfer half of the lube onto one of the slider rails, I just go off visuals for this step, and then deposit the remaining half on the other slider rail. Then I spread the lube across both rails until I feel I've evenly coated the entirety of both rails. You don't want to see any of the whiteness of the lube remaining, just a bit of sheen. If you see white, then you've probably over -lubed. At this point, there's probably some slight residual lube throughout the entire tip of your brush, whether you see it or not. I like to use whatever is left over and apply a thin coating on the two bumps on the leaf. Now, when you learn about lubing switches, you'll often hear people recommend that for linear switches, you should lube the leaf and or stem legs, and that for tactile switches, you shouldn't. I both agree and disagree with this advice. For linear switches, Yes, you should 100% apply lube to either, if not both, the switch stem legs and the leaf. Many people advise against doing the same for tactiles for two reasons. The biggest reason being that many new enthusiasts will tend to over lube these points, which secondly, by doing so, can reduce the tactility of tactile switches drastically. Especially with the thicker Crytox and Trebosis lubes being very popular nowadays, it's very easy to over lube the leaf and potentially turn your tactile switches into essentially a linear switch. This is a trade-off you'll have to consider when lubing tactile switches, as lubing these areas can lead to smoother tactiles at the expense of some tactility, but little to none if done right. Next, we can move on to the spring. 
We only really need to lube the ends of the spring, where the spring coils are bunched up, as that's where the majority of spring ping tends to generate from. I take a somewhat generous amount of lube, this time around the size of an entire switch pin, and spread it across one end of the wire. And I make several passes around the outside of the coil, as well as the inside of the coil. For the spring, it's okay to still see the whiteness of the lube after brushing it on, as it's a bit more forgiving than the other components. After you've lubed one end of the spring, install it back onto the bottom switch housing, making sure that the side you just lubed touches the bottom. With the spring installed back onto the bottom housing, repeat the lubing process for the other end of the spring that's exposed. Once you've done that, we can set the bottom housing aside as we'll be lubing the stem next. If you do own a stem holder, you can now use it to grip the stem by the crucifix, otherwise you'll just need to use your fingers. Once again, we're going to take about half a gold switch pin sized amount of lube and use this for lubing the entirety of the switch stem. Deposit half of the lube onto one of the stem sliders, then deposit the rest on the opposite stem slider. At this point, you'll still have some residual lube on the tip of your brush and I just stab the back face a couple times as well as the top portion of the front face with the switch legs. Then starting with one of the faces with the stem sliders, I evenly spread the lube across the entirety of this face. Make sure to also lube the top ledge of the slider. Also, it is perfectly okay to cross over the edges as they are all points of friction. For the next steps, order of operation is important and I think for my particular method, it greatly helps in maintaining consistency across multiple switches. Once I've lubed a slider stem, I then brush across the back edge several times. Just like I said for the bottom housing, on all areas we lube, we're just looking for a light sheen. We shouldn't be seeing any whiteness of the lube. We then evenly spread the lube on the other switch face with the slider, keeping in mind to lube the top ledge as well again. And then finally, I always lube the face with the switch legs last. Evenly brush along the top surface here, regardless of whether your switch is linear or tactile. As mentioned earlier in this video, if you're lubing linear switches, then you should always lube the stem legs next. For tactile switches, consider the trade-off between smoothness and tactility if you choose to do so. At this point, you'll still have some residual lube on your brush, whether you see it or not. I brush evenly on the bottom edges of the stem, lube around the base of the pole, and then just with what sliver of lube remains, I brush it onto the tip of the pole. And that's pretty much it for the lubing process. Now all we have left is to reassemble the switch. You want to place your stem back on the spring, making sure to align the stem legs such that they face the leaf of the bottom housing. Then grab your top housing, align the logo with the leaf of the bottom housing, if your switch doesn't have a logo, it's the side with the curve, and snap everything together. And there you have it, you've lubed a mechanical switch. Lubing a single switch is fairly easy. What separates good lubers, lubists, from bad ones is how consistent one can replicate a feel across multiple switches and hopefully for an entire board. When you're lubing switches for a build, find a switch that you've lubed early on that you are satisfied with and try to replicate that feel for all the other switches. I generally lube in batches of 10 to 20 and after I've lubed a batch, I'll compare all of those switches to that one switch I liked and see if I need to make any adjustments. All right, some tips and tricks for when you're lubing multiple switches. A lot of people like to use lube stations, which might help if you're into organizing everything and having an assembly line like kind of process. I personally don't use one, I just prefer chaos, but this might be something you wanna look into purchasing. One way of being efficient and saving time when lubing multiple switches is to bag or tub lube your springs. It's pretty much what it sounds like. You essentially dump all your springs into a Ziploc bag or a tub. You can already see my tub's been coated with lube from previous sessions. Drop a bit of lube into the tub and then shake like there's no tomorrow and let physics do its thing. The idea is that by shaking long enough, everything will eventually have an even coating of lube. 
You'll be applying more lube than you need in unwanted areas as well, but for something like springs, this isn't too big a problem. Depending on the switch, I may vary things up. For example, I generally don't lube the top housings, but sometimes I may if the switch is extremely scratchy. Lubing is also a rather time-consuming process. I can lube around 10 to 15 switches an hour, so if I'm lubing enough switches for let's say a 60%, that's already 4 to 6 hours I have to carve out of my week. So be prepared to commit several hours to this. Turn on your favorite show or anime while you lube. Oh, and please make sure to wash your hands once you finish lubing, especially if it gets on your fingers. All right, that's it for this video. Please consider giving it a thumbs up if you found it helpful and let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and until next time, see ya nerds.